I'm Kathy Astor, product owner for the DLME, or Digital Library of the Middle East Worksycle. This is work undertaken by a team of developers and other staff from Stanford Libraries. Briefly, for current and future DLME partners and potential contributors, um, our purpose is to have a fully operational spotlight instance that serves a range of their needs for display and management of deposited content. This tranche of development work for the current grant period will enable the relaunch and associated publicity for the DLME Spotlight site by March of 2020. I'd like to briefly introduce the team. Uh, Mark Matienzo is the Digital Library Systems and Services Direct Liaison. Uh, Jacob Hill is the business owner. Chris Beer is the technical lead. Jesse Keck is our Scrum Master. Gary Geisler is our user experience designer. Jack Reed and Camille Via are developers. And we have um, a point of contact on our infrastructure development team here, Aaron Collier, who's also participating. This is the first video for sprint number one, which was conducted, conducted during November 2019. The team will now demo the accomplishments for this first sprint period. Thanks, Kathy. Um, so uh, as Kathy mentioned, we um, are going to be demoing the sprint one work. We focused a lot of our efforts on making some changes to the local development environment for uh, DLME to be a little bit more in tune with what the access team is uh, accustomed to uh, with our projects as well as some improvements to allow us to um, continuously deliver the features that we're working on in the application to the dev server, which I'm showing uh, here right in front of us. So I'll go ahead and start demoing a couple of the features that we have worked on during the sprint one. Um, one of the things that I'll start off with is that we have um, a, a hierarchical facet here that you can see. Um, so we have the ability to take our top level types, uh, in this case for the content that we have indexed here on dev, is image, sound, and text. Uh, you have the ability to drill down into these and then see the subtypes. We're gonna show a bunch of the work that we've been doing around multilingual uh, content, but one of the things that I uh, did want to show also is some support that we've initially added for um, displaying Hidri dates. So in this case, for this date, uh, you can see here we have um, the date in Gregorian as well as Hidri uh, just displaying next to each other. Another large feature that we were working on this sprint was the addition of a statistics dashboard uh, that you can see here is in the uh, menu, uh, in the top menu of the exhibit navigation. Um, you do have the ability as an exhibit administrator to turn this page on or off. Uh, in this development environment, it is currently turned on. Um, we have various sections and we've been focusing primarily on the top section, which is displaying here, um, which is a breakdown of some of the items. Uh, we also have the ability to um, show the breakdown by language here. In addition to that, we also have the contributor section, which lists all of the institutions that have we pulled the content in, um, their country, and the number of items. And there will be more work to flesh some additional data out in, uh, in this dashboard in the future. Um, I will now hand it off to Chris to demo some additional features. Thank you, Jesse. Uh so um, in preparing to work on the DLME application itself, um, the team did a lot of work in our upstream open source ecosystems, um, including a release of Blacklight 7 um, that added support yeah. there for Arabic language um, display and internationalization, as well as some work um, to establish uh, patterns for handling multilingual sites like DLME. 
In addition to the work on Blacklight 7 itself, um, the team spent a lot of time um, working on a, a variety of other projects in this ecosystem, including the Blacklight Gallery, Blacklight O-Embed, Blacklight Hierarchy Gem, um, and Spotlight itself to bring them up to date with Blacklight 7 and current development practices. A significant amount of work um, went into the Spotlight Gem itself to bring it up to Blacklight 7 and Bootstrap 4, um, which is a major change to the UI framework. When we started the project, uh, this was the DLME website um, running Blacklight 6 and Spotlight 2. For the work of the team throughout the project, um, we can now see we, we have a website that looks similar, um, but certainly not identical to um, our, our current production website. Next, I'd like to go into more detail about the work that went into adding Arabic and right-to-left language support within Blacklight. This is the Blacklight demo site, um, currently here in English, and um, See, one of the things that we've now added is the ability to switch to Arabic view, um, where some of the labels that are coming from the application are now in Arabic. You, you may notice, though, that the site is still in left to right, so the Arabic support here is not fully baked. But um, one of the cool things we discovered in this sprint is uh, by applying HTML attributes like we are in DLME, um, we get some out of the box right to leftness. This page all of a sudden has the facets that that used to be on the left, on the right, um, content and uh, numbers aligned as you might expect in, in a right to left context. Um, that said, there are clearly some rough edges where, um, for example, the rounded corners on our search box are on the wrong sides, um, or in the format facet, the alignment is kind of a, a weird hybrid of right to left and, and left to right. Uh, so a lot of the work that's gone into our development cycle um, has been done in the DLME application itself, um, where we have English here. Um, but if we switch to right to left, we can see many of the things that were somewhat questionable in the Blacklight demo site have been addressed, um, including better facet alignment and search results that, that align, as you might expect, uh, in a right to left environment, uh, where thumbnails are swapping order, labels occur on the, the right side of, of their data. Uh, another feature I want to demonstrate, uh, and I alluded to earlier, is support for multilingual fields. Some of the data providers can offer um, data in both English and Arabic, um, and perhaps other languages uh, used in the region. Um, and we want a way to support those easily within the website. Here's an example of a record in, in the Arabic view um, with an Arabic title and a selection of metadata, some of it, some of which is in Arabic, um, some of which is not. Um, uh, you'll notice if I switch into English, um, the title is now the transliterated version of the Arabic, and so the Arabic metadata is now displaying its, its English translations. Thank you very much, and we'll have more for you in about two weeks' time.